The rough gravel surfaced Vilder Panda Hook Pass forms part of the Karakal Eco Route in the Namakwa National Park, with the grassy flats of Namakwaland lying to the west and glimpses of the coast beyond. The 4.8 km pass is around 120 years old and has reasonable average gradients of 1 in 20. The pass was originally named Vilder Panda Hook in the Old Dutch style, but is today more commonly referred to in the Afrikaans version. This pass should always be viewed in tandem with the Musselpot Pass as they are inseparably linked both geographically and historically. Vilde Powder Hook roughly translates as Wild Horses Corner. This pass is not suitable for vehicles which lack ground clearance. We filmed this pass from west to east. The western start of the pass can be approached from the south through the Namakwa National Park or from Kwangnas in the southwest or Komachas in the northwest. From the start, the road can be seen rising up the mountainside towards the neck via a long right-hand curve. Considering the age of the pass, the design is actually very good, with a steady ascent gradient of 1 in 14. At the time of filming, there were several deep washaways on the outside corners of some of the bends, leaving deep crevices. If a wheel ends up in one of these holes, the consequences could be serious. The first 600 meters consists of several easy S-bends and at the 850 meter mark there's a sharper right-hand bend which changes the heading into the south until the 1.4 kilometer point where a big left-hand bend gets the heading back into the east. The road twists and turns climbing steadily through many double S-curves as the climbing continues towards the summit point which can now be seen clearly in the distance. Going back as far as 1860, copper had become the Cape Colony's second most important export. The discovery of copper in the Okip mining area meant efficient means of transporting the ore to the harbour at Honda Clip Bay had to be found. This journey of 125 kilometres by ox wagon took a full six days. The wagons had to traverse the mountains via the two passes through the Tiger Kloof. These were the tandem passes of Messelput and Wilderpaarde Hook, which virtually formed one long pass. These trips by ox wagon were tough on the wagons, which would typically carry 1,400 kilograms of ore and arrived at the port with only 900 kilograms after losing much of their cargo over the bad tracks. By 1866, there were over 300 wagons and 6,000 draft animals plying this route. The need for a better road had become urgent. Constructed under the supervision of road engineer Patrick Fletcher, the pass was built using convict labour from the Cape. The quality of Fletcher's work and design can still be seen today, holding the road up after 120 years. Prisoners were transferred by ship from Cape Town to Honda Clip Bay, and from there on foot to a convict station at the bottom of the Biffles River Valley, which ruins still exist. Work commenced on the pass on the 6th of February 1867 and it was completed in 1869. Work on this section of the pass was discontinued in March 1871 when Port Nolith was chosen in preference to Honda Clip Bay for the export of copper from the Namakwaland copper mines at Okeep. Fletcher's superb dry stone walling compares favourably with that of Thomas Paine. His pass still stands to this day on the exact same lines as constructed at the time, which is good enough proof of a road that was expertly built and properly designed. Fletcher is one of the most underrated road engineers of his time. During the construction of the two passes, he was constantly struggling to get funds from government and later had to apply lower quality workmanship to the Wilderpaarde Hook Pass due to these lack of funds. The last few hundred meters towards the summit is quite steep at a gradient of 1 in 10 and suddenly the road levels offered a small level area. There's a three-way intersection here with a smaller track leading away sharply to the left rising up the mountainside. This is a farm road and goes on and on for many kilometers. Don't follow this road unless you know exactly where you're going. Remain on the wider road, which sweeps through a sharp left-hand bend and immediately begins descending, but at a gentler gradient of 1 in 30. The road now follows the eastern side of a small stream and another minor road forms a wide junction at the 3.9 km point. Continue straight on and even though it feels that speed can be increased here, be wary of severe corrugations, soft sand and some washaways. After a few more easy curves, the end of the eastern side of the pass is reached at a cattle grid adjacent to a few farm buildings on the right. 